Hello, this video is on hypothesis testing, specifically on the chi-squared goodness of fit test, fitting observed data to a binomial distribution, as shown here in the syllabus. The basic steps of a chi-squared goodness of fit test are step one, to state the null and alternative hypotheses. Step two, to calculate the expected frequencies. Step three, to state the significance level and to calculate the number of degrees of freedom. Step four, to calculate the value of the test statistic and the p-value. Step five, to state the acceptance and rejection criteria. And step six, to draw or make a conclusion using either the test statistic or the p-value. To remind you of the acceptance and rejection criteria. If the test statistic is greater than the critical value, or if the p-value is less than the sig significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, H0. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. In this question, Chloe tosses three coins 200 times and makes a note of the number of heads each time. And she's interested in finding out whether her results follow a binomial distribution. In part A, we're asked to state the null and alternative hypothesis. For a binomial distribution, tossing three coins means that the number of trials will equal three and the probability of success getting ahead on a coin is equal to 0 0.5. So the null hypothesis, H0, is that the data collected does fit a binomial distribution with the parameters 3 and 0 0.5. The alternative hypothesis, H1, is that the data collected does not fit the binomial distribution stated. In part B, to state the number of degrees of freedom, we can use the formula mu equals n minus 1, where n is the number of categories, in this case 4. So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, so there are 3 degrees of freedom. In part C, to find the expected frequencies for the number of heads obtained, we first need to calculate the probability for each number of heads. And we do this on the calculator. From the main menu, if we select statistics and then press F5 for a distribution and F5 again for a binomial distribution and F1 for a binomial probability calculation. To set up the distribution, we scroll down and set the number of trials, n equal to 3, press and execute, and set in the probability of success, p equal to 0 0.5, press and execute. And then for the first category, or the first number of heads, scroll up and set x equal to 0. Pressing execute to perform the calculation and writing down the probability. Repeating this for the other categories, so pressing exit, scrolling up and setting x equal to 1 and pressing execute. For the next value of x, setting x equal to 2. And for the final value of x, set an x equal to 3. Given the probabilities shown. As the experiment was repeated 200 times, we need to multiply these probabilities by 200 to find the expected frequencies. And to do this from the main menu, if we select run matrix, and type in the first probability, 0 0.125, and multiply it by 200. 
giving 25 outcomes. Repeating the process for the other categories, as shown. In part D, to find the test statistic and the p-value, we need to enter the observed and expected frequencies into list 1 and list 2 on the calculator. So from the main menu, if I go back to the statistics option and press F6 and then F4 to delete all the contents of a list, confirming with F1 and scrolling across and repeating that process for the other lists. Now I'm ready to enter the observed frequencies in list 1. So that's 28, 67, 83 and 22 are the observed outcomes and the expected ones are in list 2 are 25, 75, 75 and 25. Then pressing F6 twice to get back to the main statistics menu, pressing F3 for a test, F3 again for a chi-squared test, and F1 for a goodness of fit test. Scrolling down and setting the number of degrees of freedom equal to 3, and pressing execute to perform the test. Writing down the chi-squared test statistic and the p-value and rounding to three significant figures. In part E, as the critical value is given, we can compare the test statistic to the critical value. And as 2.43 is less than 7.815. In other words, as the chi-squared test statistic is less than the critical value, we conclude that there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, page zero. So we accept it. And finally, to interpret the conclusion in the context of the question, we state that there is sufficient evidence at the 10% significance level to suggest that the data Chloe collected does fit the binomial distribution.